This is not my theory. This is my truth. This is what happened to me. Nightmare on Elm Street is huge. And there's people like me out there who love and want to own everything of Nightmare on Elm Street. This went under the radar. I barely came across this. So up next from Vinegar Syndrome is Scream Queen, my Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm -hmm. And this is the sort of behind the scenes documentary, uh, a little bit about, I don't know, is it too much? Is it too much about the making of or just the impact of this movie on this guy's life? It's the impact of okay. this movie. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not a making of right. Nightmare on Elm Street. It's about too. him and what's happened to him as a result. Yeah. So here's what the synopsis says. Um, so it's it stars this guy, Mark Patton, who was the main character from Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Mm-hmm. Yep. Freddy's Revenge. So Scream Queen follows this guy, Mark, as he travels to different horror conventions across the U.S. Each new city unwraps a chapter from his life that is met with equal parts joyful and bittersweet detail as he attempts to make peace with his past and embrace his legacy as cinema's first male Scream Queen. Scream Queen also finds Patton confronting Freddy's revenge cast and crew for the first time, including co-stars Robert Rosler, Kim Myers, Clue Gallagher, as well as Freddy Krueger himself, Robert England. It's a blast. So have you seen this before? I own it. You own it. And when it released, it was only released on DVD. And I am an avid Nightmare on Elm Street collector. I had to own it. And okay. I've watched it. It's great. Is it? Yeah. It's really good. Very honest take on it's everything. very sad. And as someone who thought I knew everything about Nightmare on Elm Street, and I, I have a particular fondness for two. I have always said Nightmare on Elm Street 2 is one of, if not the best sequel to Nightmare on Elm Street. I don't care if you believe me or not. Honestly, that synopsis undersells it. Hmm. It's very sad what he went through. He completely retired from acting after Nightmare on Elm Street 2, moved to Mexico with his boyfriend, who was also an actor. He's gay in real life. Okay. And if you don't know anything about Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Nightmare on Elm Street 2 uh, was always known as the gay nightmare. Mm -hmm. And not in a positive way. Horror fans in the 80s and 90s just ripped this apart for its homosexual subtext. I don't know this one well at all. I think I may have only seen parts to the the point where when I did see it as a kid, I I didn't pick up on that at all. Well, pay attention next time. I did notice things as a kid where I was like, that's kind of weird. Yeah, the gym teacher Mm -hmm. who's like in the S and M and at an S and M bar. Uh, there's a whole sequence where Jesse is cleaning his room and he's like dancing provocatively. Basically the thing about nightmare Two is if this was a female in the lead, mm-hmm. nobody would have batted an eye. Yeah. It's typically the final girl. Yeah. I mean, that we yeah, have, it. we have a term for it, the yeah. final girl. Um, so even back then, no one knew that Mark Patton was gay in real life. In 1985, Hollywood was very homophobic and very AIDS phobic. And when you signed a contract for a television series, they gave you a blood test. So if you were gay, you were hiding. The fact that he, I guess, was a feminine in his mannerisms and because he was playing what traditionally would have been a female character Mm -hmm. in slasher films, it just came across as, you know, gay. He has a friend named Grady, and he has a girlfriend named Lisa. Mm -hmm. It's it's odd. There's a lot of, uh, for instance, when when Jesse in one scene towards the end is really, you know, Freddy's going to come out of me, come Come out. out, And this is the only entry where Freddy actually possesses somebody and comes Comes out out of of their body. He runs to Grady instead of Lisa. And he's awkward around Lisa. And like, even in the beginning, when him and Grady first meet, they're like wrestling around. I don't know. It's, it's there. They didn't know. He, the person who knew on my audition. All, everyone involved, the writer of Nightmare on Street 2, denied it. He said that was all on this actor for being gay in real life. That's why the movie came out that way. I get to confront David Chaskin and say, you wrote this as a gay movie. You've been lying for 30 years about this. And every time people ask you about it, you say, no, Mark was just so gay that he ruined the movie. So in the 80s and 90s, everyone involved in the production, from the director and the writer, the people who would know the most, Mm -hmm. they denied it. And they totally put it on his doorstep. Mm -hmm. Then, once tolerance started to change in in America, uh, if if you're watching Mm -hmm. in another country, you know, America is made progress and now they started to kind of take credit for it mm-hmm. you know what i mean yeah. as if like yeah that was intended we were oh the producers ahead of back the time. then are now saying that the writer kind of changed his tune mm-hmm. somewhere in the mid 2000s 
And Mark Patton was rightfully upset. He was like, listen, I've faced death threats. I've <laughs> moved out of the country. I retired from my career, all this stuff. This whole documentary is him tracking down and confronting the writer. And he gets to do it. By the end of the movie, he sits down with him and basically like, dude, you fucked up my life. And can you be honest about what this was and yeah. all that? Like, it's, it's interesting as hell. It was just a horror movie. You know, it's building momentum to like that showdown of... Yeah. How is the writer going to defend himself after and, changing his tune? Right, when, and this especially, man's life, especially if he's on record. Yeah, I mean, and this man's life was sadly like torn apart. His boyfriend died around that time, also wow. when all this was going on from HIV. This is the eighties, also. What's, this isn't modern day. Like yeah. this was back when you hid that shit. For people, sure, yeah. you know, it was evil back then. In the eighties, I mean, you had kids' movies saying "faggot" and "fag." I mean, it was just awful. Years have gone on. Nightmare 2 has received a sort of revisionist appreciation. And he, making this documentary, he started going to conventions now. He never did. It, it, just when he started doing it. I bet it, that would be for tough 20 for 20-some years, be, he never these, did it. Have all these questions asked of you, like when yeah, you yeah. don't want to really talk about it, if it ruins your life? Well, like, that's what the movie says. He goes to different conventions and... And, you know, I, piece, I, but. I go to conventions. I've met damn near every cast member from every Nightmare on Elm Street movie, and he's never been there. What was Robert England's take on Robert all England this? Robert was cool as fuck. I knew we were we were treading in there. I knew we were tiptoeing around this. Robert England has stated, like, oh, I knew right from the bat, right from the jump And he what liked it was. that. He yeah, liked yeah. that movie. And he said in European audiences, he said, got it right away. He Loved said Nightmare it. on Elm Street 2 was a hit in Europe. And he said, I knew right from the gate. And he was like, and I thought it was interesting because that's what Freddy would do. He would find your insecurities and he's going to fuck with you yeah. on that. And he even pointed to one scene where uh, it's in the pool party scene where Jesse's inside and Freddy, you know, wreaks havoc, but then confronts him. And Robert England even states, like, if you watch that scene, I'm flirting with him. I'm playing with oral there. I'm playing with a lot of symbolism. And what's this guy, Mark Patton's feeling towards... Robert England, he's like, okay, he gets fine. a pass. He was like, he's good. He's I'm fine, really after this writer not, who it's, like it's, is, is basically, more... yeah. But it, but it's also not a complete like he's. It, it's not an angry documentary. Mm -hmm. He is just going out like I want to get. I want resolution. Yeah, I want closure. I just want to know. I, and he's not. And it's nice, like when yeah. they all meet up, even the writer, like they hug and shit. It, it's nice. It's mm -hmm. like, all right, we got to the bottom of this. It, it's good. I think it's time that you just let it go. When I bought it, it was like, all right, preaching to the choir. I'm a Nightmare on Elm Street fanboy. I'm going to enjoy this regardless. Mm -hmm. But I actually showed it to my wife, who has never seen Nightmare on Elm Street 2. And I was like, this is just a good documentary, even yeah. if you've never seen Nightmare on Elm Street 2. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. And you've only ever owned this on DVD. It's and only been released okay. on DVD. And so now you've got Vinegar Syndrome. It's like a partner release. They're yes. doing a 1500 only limited, limited run yeah. of this, which looks like it's got a nice little slipcase on it, I'm I like assuming. the pink. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's a nice little pink. I like how we're looking here. Yeah. And I don't know, was there a lot on the DVD that you had as far as bonus, bonus content? Features. I don't recall. So what this one's touting is some music video called Split Second by Skeleton Head. I don't know what that is. An audio commentary with Mark Patton, Roman Chimenti, and Tyler Jensen. The Psychic, an alternate opening. The Monster is Queer, a look at horror genre studies with Dr. Andrew Scahill. Bedtime Story with Mark Patton, a tribute to Wes Craven. Extended fireside chat with the cast of Freddy's Revenge. Backstage with Scream Queen, femininity in the horror film genre, a discussion. And a booklet with an essay by BJ Colangelo. So, I mean, it looks like they've got cool features. They have a lot of good the stuff. The Wes Craven one is interesting because Wes Craven didn't have anything to do with two. And, yeah, I know. Wes Craven always gets fucked on he his, does. like, what he wants for his movies and how Everything. he didn't want a sequel and they had made him change it. Dude, so the Dream um, Warriors, how that's like the, 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 that's pretty much the most popular yeah. sequel. You know, Craven wrote a script for that. They Bob Shea brought him back in because he felt like he did him wrong with two. And because of the reaction to two. Two. Two is, is my least favorite. It's so hard to watch. Like deviated from the original storyline. They wanted to do course correction. He was like, well, let's get Wes back on. Yeah. And Wes is a good guy. He came back on and did a script, but they didn't even use his script. Yeah. They rewrote the shit out of it. And it ended up what uh, Chuck Russell and Darabont brought to it. Yeah. Robert England wanted more money or something for the second movie. They said, we don't really even need you. Mm -hmm. We're going to get some like stunt double or something. And it's they in the movie. And they immediately it's like, in the movie, regretted it. It was like a weekend. They immediately regretted it, paid him everything yeah. he wanted and brought it back. This is how great Robert England is. And he embodies that character in the original. I know you've known the original oh, yeah. well, right? Sure. 
the scene where he's in the alley with Tina mm-hmm. in the beginning mm-hmm. of it, you know, the arms are extended. Yes. When the shot where he starts chasing her and she runs, but then she runs right into Freddy. You, I mean, obviously it's a double playing yeah. Freddy chasing her. You can tell clear as day because that body language is different. He's running all like, you yeah. know, and there There's is a, a swagger scene. to Freddy. There is, there is. And he's defined it himself. It was based on like James Cagney and you know, it is as a yeah. kind of like a hunch, and, yeah. you know, gangster kind of element to it. They would fool around in the sound mix and they can slow you down a bit, gives you a little more bass in your voice. All I remembered as an actor in the uh, early nightmare films was I don't want the very speed to make me sound artificial. And so I began to do the Freddy voice faster. So if I said, uh, welcome to prime time, bitch, ha! <laughs> It would come out on the feature film, Welcome to Prime Time, Bitch! <laughs> it would slow down naturally. Nightmare 2 tries to do a different story. You gotta mm-hmm. understand, it was part two. Yeah. The, the established, you know, there wasn't anything established beyond the original. Mm-hmm. And all you had a choice to do, what do you just remake the original, which most sequels do, would do, or take it in a different direction, which is more body possession and all that, which they did. I like what they did. They saw it didn't work, and yeah. then 3 came around, and it's, the same thing as the original, yeah. just with you can fight back in dreams yeah. and be what you want to be aspect, yeah. which they, is creative as well. They revitalized it with the, the third one. The Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, say what you will about the quality of each sequels, but they're all pretty creative. Yeah. Each one in its own way, I feel like, tried a different avenue. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just like more kids, Freddy kids. It wasn't like Friday 13th. Yeah. It was... They try. And it was just the, the nature of it being in dreams. You can do anything. I mean, and this he, is... And he can do anything. Yes. I mean, you can. this is the most creatively free idea you can have, mm-hmm. you know? I know Nightmare on Elm Street better than any other... Friday the 13th, Halloween, whatever. And I don't. I know that there hasn't been any Nightmare on Elm Street 4K box sets, nothing announced, nothing no. mentioned. I don't know who will maybe put that out one day, what I, company, I scream. someone like that. But that would be a collection I would probably buy. I'm not going to buy Friday the 13th or even anything for all of Halloween, but I, I've seen all of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. I've seen every one where I have not seen all the others of these other franchises. And it is something that I really look back to in my childhood. And I loved one a lot i didn't i don't know two that well but i loved three i even loved four even five eh, they st- i mean they start to get a little I, bit more hokey but I, I still enjoy them yes i love them all and but of course i'm logical i can tell you freddy's dead is is not good yeah <laughs> on, a, on a film level but i love it yeah i can quote it i've seen it multiple times i didn't even mind new nightmare like for what it well, was new trying nightmare, to do well, New Nightmare was well received mm-hmm. critically and commercially. A lot of people would say New Nightmare is the best sequel. Well, you don't really have to worry about it because nobody asked you. The only reason I would disagree on it, I just don't like the way Freddy looks in it. Yeah. I never liked that. And I think. New Claw, too, I think. Yeah. There's, there's some new, new stuff. New Claw, new design, leather pants, the whole <laughs> the whole deal. Yeah, it just didn't work. I for forgot me. the leather pants. Fuck you! <laughs> And uh, <laughs> Jim Morrison, Freddy Krueger, we got going on over here. Okay. No, but it is. It's a very smart movie. It doesn't have the rewatchable factor that the other mm-hmm. films have. Scream perfected what New Nightmare was ultimately do. doing, yeah. was being meta and bringing it into the real world. Which was interesting. Characters who were aware, and they're the characters from the original. It is interesting. It's, it's a yeah. good. It's a great movie, dude. Yeah. What New Nightmare is a great movie. Well, this is coming out. <laughs> this is actually in two weeks, and you pre-ordered this already. You said it's right? not available for pre-order yet. I oh. have. This is what's killing me. Oh. I've never seen this with a Vinegar Syndrome release. I have. I have it set up. I'm getting emailed the minute this goes up for pre-order. But yeah, dude, we're about two weeks out, and yeah. you can't pre-order. And it's limited to fifteen hundred. It's a big deal. And I'm telling. I wanted people to know. Is this about- a big title? It's really not, but that I think Nightmare on Elm Street is huge, and there's people like me out there who love and want to own everything of Nightmare on Elm Street. This went under the radar. I barely came across this, and I own the DVD. Mm-hmm. I, I'm aware of this film. Any Freddy fans out there, any Nightmare 2 fans out there, any Nightmare fans in general, keep an eye out. 1500 Limited, and this is a quality documentary. You are all my children now.